There's a great example of um, the RAF, which is the Royal Air Force. Um, one of their former pilots was retrained at taxpayers' expense as a stripper, which um, I don't think is very good uh, use of taxpayers' money. Hello, I'm Juna Runga with Reason TV and I'm here with Matthew Elliott from the UK Taxpayers Alliance. UK Taxpayers Alliance, how long has it been running? Uh, you're the founder. What was the impetus to start this Taxpayers Alliance? We've been going now for six years. Um, so the impetus was really the government has started uh, massively hiking spending in the UK and literally spending on education, healthcare has doubled in real terms over the past 10 years. And the trouble was all this extra spending was coming in without any real checks on how the money was being spent. So taxpayers needed a representative group to actually look at how the money was being spent and point out where it's been wasted. Um, I think that um, taxpayers across the world have reacted to the financial crisis and have um, actually wanted to you know, improve their lot and make sure uh, their money's been well spent and hold politicians to account. But it's happened differently in different countries. Obviously the Tea Party movement in the US. In the UK we've had the rise of you know, my group, the Taxpayers Alliance, but also the um, big reaction against the MPs' expenses scandal last year when it was found they were abusing a lot of their expenses. And if you go over to Germany, there was a huge reaction um, last year when it was taught the talk of um, a, Greek, uh, a bailout of the Greek economy uh, following their crisis with the uh, bond markets. And the huge reaction there, big rise of Euroscepticism. So this taxpayer rebellion has happened in a different way in different countries, according to the uh, cultural te temperament, partly, of the people. Uh, but it is a phenom phenomenon that's going on worldwide. What have been the most surprising discoveries that TPA has made since starting to dig into government expenditure? I, we've done everything right from the top end, you know, looking at um, business development grants, there's something called the uh, regional development agencies, which basically sucked out a lot of taxpayers' cash from small firms and actually did nothing to actually help them, really. And we exposed that, and thankfully they're now being shut down by the new government. We also, also um, expose slightly more sort of comical things too. Share, share a funny story with us. There's a great example of um, the RAF, which is the Royal Air Force. Um, one of their former pilots was retrained at taxpayers' expense as a stripper, which um, I don't think is very good uh, use of taxpayers' money. What's the main strategy you've employed throughout in building the organisation? I think the key point was a ruthless focus on the mainstream media, so trying to get lots of broadcasting hits and lots of newspaper hits. And now we roughly get about six to 700 mainstream media hits every month. So the public are very aware of what the taxpayers lines are doing. And as a result of that, the politicians are very aware of what we're doing and therefore um, you know, know they're being watched by the TPA and by our 60,000 supporters. So really working on our uh, mainstream media coverage. And that meant producing very newsworthy reports that would, uh, would make you know, good copy for newspaper editors. And I hope made politicians feel that they're really being watched and therefore made them more accountable. How does the relationship between the UK and the EU uh, make your work complex? The EU is much less transparent than the uh, UK, so we have less rights as taxpayers and as citizens to actually request details of how our money has been spent over the, in the EU. And that's one of the things we're trying to work on at the moment. Um, you know, approximately £10 billion of our money from the UK goes to the EU each year, but we have no oversight on that. But I think it's a crucial area, and because the EU, because Brussels is so far removed from the people, there is a general feeling out there they're less accountable, and sometimes you hear about you know, more waste going on. And the fact, for example, they're asking for a 6% rise in their budget this year, when all the national governments within the EU are actually cutting back on spending, yeah, says a lot about their, um, I would say, their arrogance when it comes to taxpayers' rights. What are the key takeaways from your work? I think the key thing is, in building up the organisation, people won't necessarily join the group as the Taxpayers' Alliance. But there could be a specific issue, a specific aspect of government waste or a specific tax that they're uh, particularly concerned about, which you can then use to actually set up a Facebook group or set up a Twitter feed on it and actually get people engaged in that way. Economic recovery. Finally, what you're most proud of? I'd say I'm most proud of our work on transparency because I believe that um, whether or not you want high government spending or low government spending, taxpayers have a right to know how their money's been spent. 
you know, for many of them, it's up to 40%, 50% of their income. It's a lot of money. And they have rights too. So I think through our work on the Freedom of Information Act, through our work on actually encouraging the new government to bring in its own transparency measures and put different receipts online and what have you, we've actually done taxpayers a great service. And what it means is going forward, every taxpayer, every taxpayer in the country can go to their home computer and they can be the, uh, the army of uh, armchair accountants, if you like, actually holding government to account and making sure their money is well spent. Thank you for joining us, Matthew. For Reason TV, this is Juna Runga.